Welcome to the Transparent FX Academy. I'm Nick and I'm a top author and trading with over 190k reputation points. In this video, I will be speaking about market structure. And by the end of this tutorial, you will know exactly how to identify easily and with a clear set of rules structure in any market. So without further ado, let's get right into it and make sure that you watch the full video to get the complete explanation. Okay, so first of all, let's define what structure actually is in the context of a market structure. Now, first of all, how do we identify where the market has previous resistance turn support or previous support turn resistance and even what these concepts are in the first place? Now, you have to keep in mind that every market is either moving in a range or it is trending to the upside or it is trending to the downside. Now, Let's identify from a clear textbook perspective what these movements will actually look like and then we will move to some real-time charts to see exactly real-life examples of these market situations. Now, first of all, if you have an uptrend, what you expect the market to do and what is an uptrend in the first place is a series of impulses and corrections which creates higher highs and higher lows. So. During the creation of an uptrend, what you're expecting is the market to create every time a new higher high, then a new higher low, and every time you're expecting the market to go and retest the previous level. So let's say the market is moving to the upside, then it is creating a correction, then it's creating a new higher high. So this high here that is higher than the previous one here, like for example here you have this high, then you have a new higher high. This is by definition the start of an uptrend. The first time the market creates a new higher high, that is the start of an uptrend. And if then the market follows with a correction and creates a higher low after testing exactly the previous high, that is how from a textbook perspective you expect an uptrend to develop. So you expect then the creation of a new higher low, so a low that is higher than the previous one, like for example as we had here, and then the creation of yet another higher high. And every time you're expecting the market, as I just said, to go and test exactly the previous resistance turned support. Now the previous resistance turned support, which you listen to many people speaking about this, is simply the previous level from which the market started the move to the downside in the case of an uptrend. So the easiest way to look at market structure is always asking yourself, okay, so where is the last time that the market went to the opposite side? So in the case of an uptrend, like for example, as we're having right here, let's say we had this situation here in the market. So we had a massive impulse to the upside, which created a new higher high. Right. So what we're supposed to ask ourselves in this case is where is the last time that the market went to the opposite side? Now, in this case, the market is clearly moving to the upside. Right. So the last time that the market went to the opposite side was during this move to the downside. And where does this opposite side movement start? Well, it starts exactly here. So this is exactly the previous resistance turn support or the market structure level. So at this point, what we would expect is for the market to go and test exactly this previous resistance turn support, which is essentially the previous high, or in other words, the last time that the market went to the opposite side, and then from here to create a new higher low, and then a new higher high. And in this specific case, as we can see, as the market was developing this uptrend, that is exactly what the market did. The market went and tested exactly this level and then followed with the creation of a new weekly, in this case, higher high, therefore continuing this weekly uptrend. Now, in the case of a downtrend, you essentially have the exact same situation, but you have it uh, reversed. So what do I mean by you having the same, same situation but reversed? Well, in the case of a downtrend, you expect you essentially expect the market to create lower lows and lower highs in which every time the market is going and testing exactly the previous support turned resistance. Now, as you can see, we can apply the same concept 
that we did here because we can what we can ask ourselves as we did in the case of a bullish trend when the market is creating a bearish trend we can ask ourselves okay so where is the last time that the market went to the opposite side? In the case of a downtrend, the last time the market went to the opposite side is when the market moved to the upside. So when it, the market was moving to the upside and creating this correction. So if we move to an actual real market example of a downtrend, like for example, a, let me find a, a perfect example of a downtrend to make the explanation as easy as possible. So for example, when you see the market pushing to the downside, okay, so in this case, creating this impulse to the downside, therefore printing a new lower low. So lower than the previous low here, at this point, what you would naturally ask yourself is, okay, so where's the last time that the market went to the opposite side? And in this case, the last move to the upside, so the move to the up to the opposite side was this push to the upside, which created this green candle here. So what you would expect at this point is the market structure to be around this level, and you expect the market to go and correct to this zone and then print the new lower low, so a low that is lower than the previous low, and a lower high, so a high that is lower than the previous high. And we can see that that is how it, usually the market does it does essentially move. The market tends to respect these levels as market structure levels. So the next time that you find yourself yourself completely confused, okay, so what is market structure? What is this person speaking about when he says previous resistance turns support or previous support turn resistance? And how do we find these levels of structure? Well, the easiest answer is always asking yourself, okay, so where is the last time that the market went? to the opposite side. That is usually what will give you the easiest answer. Looking at where is the last time that the market moved to the opposite side, that will be the previous resistance turn support or the previous support turn resistance. And the market has an increased probability if it is moving in an ideal uptrend or in an ideal uptrend or, or an ideal downtrend, sorry, to go and retest exactly those levels as previous support turn resistance or previous resistance turned support. And that is a general rule of the market. When you see a level of structure, which is getting tested multiple times or even just one time, and the market then breaks above that level, and by breaking above the level, I mean seeing a candle on that time frame close above the zone, at that point, all that previous resistance is turned support. Traders will start looking at that level as a new support level. So from resistance to support, that is what previous resistance turned support means. And at that point, that is, that is when you have an increased probability of seeing a test of the level and a rejection to the upside. So essentially the market respecting that level as previous resistance turns support. The exact same level holds true for the opposite situation where you have a previous level of support being respected from the market in multiple occasions, then the market breaks below the zone. At that point, that previous support becomes resistance. And what you would expect is for the market to go and test the level and then create the continuation to the downside. That is what it naturally the market in most cases will follow through with. And anyway, that is what most traders are looking at. They're looking after a break below a previous support and resistance to see a retest of the level and then that level to res be respected as resistance and the market creating a rejection to the downside away from such level. And what in the case of market structure, in the case of a ranging market? Well, in that case, that is one of the easiest level, uh, that is one of the easiest situations to have when it comes to identifying the market structure in that situation. Because when you have a market which is moving in a range, let's say, for example, you have a, the market which is moving horizontally. Now, if the market is moving horizontally, so it is not in an uptrend, it is not in a downtrend, it, when you see the market just respecting in multiple occasions the same level as resistance or the same level as support, that will be the market structure. The market is bounded in a range. You have the top of the range at a certain level. You have the bottom of the range at another level. Okay, very, very important. So let's find, for example, a clear example of a ranging market, a ranging situation, for example, on this pair. So what we can see is that when the market was moving right here, it was not in an uptrend, it was not in a downtrend because it was not creating higher highs and higher lows, it was not creating lower lows and lower highs, and that is by definition 
uh, range, right? When you have a range bound market. Now, in this specific case, the market here was bounded in between these two levels, acting as resistance and support. This means that if you were to look at the market here, you would identify this structure in this way. You would have the top of the range acting as resistance and the bottom of the range acting as support. At the same time, you would also be able to identify some structure levels in between these two, uh, essentially top and bottom of the range. Because even though the market is moving in between these two levels, there is anyway some kind of a higher highs and higher lows being created, but that is just minor structure inside of the actual market structure, which in this case is a range bound market. Now, I hope that uh, this tutorial has given you uh, overview of what exactly you're supposed to be looking at where when you're looking at the market and you're feeling lost, you're supposed to be looking and asking yourselves these very simple questions. Is the market is in, a, in an uptrend? Is it in a downtrend? Is it in a range? So in other words, is it creating higher highs and higher lows? Is it creating lower lows and lower highs? Or is it just moving sideways? If it is moving sideways, you just identify the high and the low of the range. If it is in an uptrend, you have to ask yourselves, okay, where is the last time that the market went? To the opposite side. Exact same question that you're supposed to be asking yourself in the case of a downtrend. Now, if you want to learn more, I really suggest that you go and check out the transparentfxtrading.com website, which you find linked in the description. Here, you have the possibility to gain access to the most complete mentorship program ever that I have created. You have the possibility to gain access to all the courses, the trading station software with the Telegram signals integration, one-on-one -on -one private mentoring directly with me, the CUT data software that you see me use in all these videos. And if you continue to scroll down the website, pass the testimonials, you will see that you have the possibility to join and gain automatically access with the email and password that you will create during the sign-up process. So I really suggest that you go and check it out. The link is in the description and I will see you in it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and also let me know in the comments below any new pairs or topics that you would like me to cover in the next videos. And I will see you in my next breakdown.